Hi folks, Harry Frank from Ride Giant here. In this tutorial, I'd like to show you a ray gun from Universe 3.1. A ray gun is a design tool that allows you to arrange shapes and lines and custom images into a grid formation. You have a lot of control over the shapes, colors, as well as the layout, transformation, and animation. So each of these sections here, line grid, shape grid, cell grid, and single shape, have check boxes right on the inside to enable or disable that section. So I'm going to uncheck this draw shape grid so we can focus on this very first section, line grid. Now I might go without saying, but these controls up here are global controls for everything in terms of the overall position of everything, as well as the overall height and width of everything, and the number of columns and rows that are being rendered in the grid formation. So if I go to this line grid section here, it's all pretty straightforward. We're drawing a grid using these settings up here in terms of the width, height, column, and rows. The overall color of the grid is defined right here, as well as the overall stroke width. Now we can also draw grid subdivisions inside the grid. So if I turn this on, we'll have another set of lines drawing inside the grid. And we also have a variable stroke thickness on these as well as variable color. We can independently position the grid, scale it in X and Y, as well as rotate it independently from the other sections. Back up here at the top, we can switch this from a grid to just drawing regular lines like that. I'll click on Reset, and let's jump to the Shape Grid section. And this is really the bulk of the plugin. You're going to find most of the controls in here. Let me turn off this line grid so we can just focus on the Shape Grid section. So let me do a quick explanation of what the shape grid is doing. Now the shapes that are being drawn are specified in each shape section. We've got shape 1, shape 2, 3, and 4. So you notice I've got a square and an ellipse drawn. Shape 3 is set to none, so it only has two shapes to choose from, so it randomly draws one of those two shapes. If I set shape 3 to something like a triangle, it will now render squares, ellipses, and triangles. Now, the color that's being chosen is also randomly assigned based on the color palette that you assign it. Now, there was much thought given into how the colors work in here, and we tried to strike a balance between having a lot of control, but easily being able to add a lot of color to your shapes without having to define complex color palettes for each individual shape section. So here's the approach that we took. We have these color scheme settings right here, and you can see the default setting is to use color A and B, and it's randomly picking one of these colors and assigning it to all of the shapes. If I set this to color A, it will just use one color. That's pretty straightforward. But these other color palettes down here, such as analogous or triadic, these use commonly use color palettes that define color based on hue relative to a main color. So in this case, our main color is color A, and triadic is actually using colors evenly spaced around the hue of that color. A good reference for a very similar set of color palettes is at color.adobe.com. If I set this to the triad color palette, we can see that we've got colors evenly spaced around the color wheel. So they are a fixed angle from each other, and I can't change the angle. However, if I set this to an analogous color, now this is actually using a set of five colors. Over here, we're actually just defining three colors in a ray gun. But I can define an angle from the main color, and then we have evenly spaced colors away from the main color. So in a case like this, where I have an analogous color, where I change the color range away from the main color is in this hue offset. So you'll notice if I set this to zero, they're all the same color because there is no hue offset. So if I turn this up a little bit, you'll see more and more color variation. You also have lightness control over those two colors that are defined right here. So if you'd like the second and third colors that are defined to be darker or lighter, we can control the color there. So like I said, the goal was to be able to be flexible, but also integrate a lot of color without having to do a tremendous amount of clicking and defining of color. If you really do want very individual color over each of your shapes, you can set this to individual colors. And then if I go into each shape, you'll see a fill color defined 
and we can define the fill color separately for each shape. I'll set this back to, let's say, a triadic color palette. And I'll bring the height way down like this. And let's take the shape count down. And what this does is simply defines a probability at each of the points or how likely we are to draw a shape at that point. So in other words, if I set this to 100, it will draw a shape at each point in the grid. Let me turn up the number of columns as well, so we're drawing more. So if I turn this down to 50, we'll see that half of the points are actually drawing shapes. Now, in the shape grid, above the individual shape sections, we have things like overall shape scale. This changes the size of all of the shapes. We also have an overall rotation control, as well as some random controls. So we can randomize the position. We can randomize the shape scale, and we can randomize the rotation of all these. But you'll note that in each individual section, there are also position, scale, and rotation controls. So you can control them globally here, or you can control them individually for each shape. So I can change the size of just the squares, as well as the rotation of the squares, size random, etc. I'll set one of these other shapes to a little more interesting of a shape, which is the plus shape. I can set the rotation to 45 degrees, and the aspect control with regard to the plus actually adjusts the thickness of the shape itself. Most other cases, it just squashes and stretches the shape. So for the plus, I'll turn up the shape here and turn the aspect way down to make this kind of a thin plus, and I'll turn up the size random. I'm gonna bring the height out just a little bit to make these not so compressed. In fact, I can bring this shape count down a little bit more. So now if I go to the line grid and set this to just draw lines, we can start to get a fairly interesting design here. Now, the shape grid still has a few more tricks up its sleeve. I'd like to go to the animation settings and show how this works. So we have different types of animation behavior where we can randomize the values, oscillate them, wiggle or flicker the values over time. One of the most useful ones, I think, is oscillate. Now, it's not going to do anything until I tell what parameters to affect, and I can check multiple parameters. So if I check animate size, you will see that we have this animate size amount, and it will oscillate the size using the animation speed and amplitude that I define here. That might be a bit much, so I can bring the animation size down. I can also animate opacity, rotation, position, and more. Now I'm not recommend we turn all of these on at the same time, but doing a simple oscillation on size is a really good way just to add a little bit of movement to these. Now the animation grouping really just defines how the animation values are applied. So random means they are applied randomly to each shape. If I set something like unison, this will apply them all at the same time. So they are essentially all oscillating together. If I set this to horizontal. Now if I set these to horizontal, it might not be easy to see because these are so randomized that we don't see the actual uh, grid behavior. So I'm gonna click on reset to our main settings here. And just to go through these real quick, if I set this to oscillate, in fact, let's do something super quick that's really interesting looking. So I'll set this to stroke instead of uh, fill. And just to add some color to these strokes, I'll go up to the shape grid settings here, and I'll click stroke uses color scheme. And this is going to have this, the strokes follow the same color palette. Let's also turn off the line grid because that doesn't do anything for this type of design. So I'll go to the animation section. 
and group this by a horizontal uh, grouping and animate the size and I hit play and you will see that it is sort of flowing left to right. If I set this to a vertical, we'll see that it's flowing downward. Really fun. Now I'm going to turn off the animation for now and jump back up to the section that I skipped, which is the effector. The effector is really there because I wanted a way to be able to affect very specific sections, not just animate everything, which is pretty handy, but the effector allows us to affect very specific areas. And it works in a similar way. I can check which parameters I'd like to affect, such as size. So if I check this, you can see that we have a group of circles being affected here in the middle, and we have this effector center. So as I move this around, it will affect the circles that are around this center. The width and height are expressed as a total percentage of the comp height. And really what's going on is that it's ramping the values from the beginning of the effector area to the midpoint and then ramping it back down in a linear fashion. So it's a pretty simple effector. But this is why these values actually go above 100% if for whatever reason that ramp is just a little bit too narrow for you. We can bring this above 100%. So that is the effector section. I'll uncheck effect size so everything go, goes back to normal. And let's click reset one more time. Okay, one last thing to talk about with the shape grid. Now, we can see all the different shapes in here that we can draw such as the square, rectangle, ellipse, triangle, pentagon, hexagon, plus and half circle. These are all the square all the way through the half circle shape. These are all drawn procedurally. This is using a drawing tool that draws it point by point and makes a nice, crisp, clear, procedurally drawn shape that we can make as big or as small as, as we want. Just below the half circle, we also have this thing called the sprite library. And if I click on choose a shape, this will have a window pop up. And we can use a bunch of custom shapes in here that are included with a ray gun. You are free to browse these and use these in your project. What if you've got some artwork that you want to use in here that isn't covered in the sprite library? Well, if I create any sort of layer, let's say I want to use something from the HUD plugin in Red Giant Universe. In fact, I don't need this to be huge. I'll set this to maybe a 600 by 600 solid. I'll go to Motion Graphics and browse the HUD components presets here. Let's pick one of the new presets that we've made for Universe 3.1, such as this HUD Clock 2. So let's say I want to use this as an element in a ray gun. So I'll turn off the visibility because we just need it to be there. I can go to Shape 1 and select Custom Layer. And in the custom settings here, I'll set the custom layer to the HUD layer, layer number one, and I want the source to be taken from the rendered effects and masks on the layer. I don't have any masks, but I do want to use the effects that are rendered on it. So if I turn up the size, you can see that we are using that source layer right from my HUD layer. And this is found in each shape section. So you can have four custom layers applied to all of your different shapes or use a sprite library or use the built-in shape render. So I know that's a lot going on there. Let me click reset one more time. And I wanna talk about the other sections in here that I haven't spoken of, the cell grid and single shape. And these are pretty straightforward. Cell grid draws shapes inside the empty area of the grid. By default, it draws a square. It has this checkbox here, which is match the grid size. So it's matching the size exactly to have the square fit inside the grid, which can be handy. It doesn't always work for all shapes, such as a rectangle, because, well, it's a rectangle and it doesn't fill a square. You can also uncheck that and simply scale these as you need. Now, something cool you can do here, this is found in some of the presets. If I set this to a plus, and I'll rotate it 45 degrees. And like I said, the aspect for the plus is to simply lower the uh, overall thickness of it. So we can draw these sort of X's in there. And just like the shape grid section, we have a cell count. So I can lower this so it's not always drawing a shape inside the cell. In fact, if I set this to 20%, it will only draw it 20% of the time. Last but not least, we have a single shape control 
Let me load a more interesting preset that uses the single shape. So single shape does exactly what it says. It draws a single shape in addition to all the other shapes in there. So in this preset, we can see that we are drawing a line grid that is just using lines. We have a shape grid that is actually made of outlines. So notice we've got fill and we've got stroke. So it's using some stroked squares and triangles. And then we're rendering one large single shape that is a triangle. The color is defined right here. I could add a stroke to this as well if I'd like. You can change its overall size as well as rotation. And you'll notice that the shapes from the shape grid are only rendering in the area of the single shape. And that's what this setting is right here, mat the shape grid. If I set this to none, we'll see all of the shapes drawing uh, outside of the shape as well. The other option is to essentially invert it, which makes it look like the single shape is actually on top. That's about as much as I can cover in as short amount of time as I possibly can with this plugin. It's a really fun plugin to play with, and I suggest that you'd spend some time messing around with it and coming up with some fun stuff. It's a great background generator and overall just fun design tool to work with. So my name is Harry Frank for Red Giant. We'll see you in the next tutorial.